If content creation and like the behind the scenes of content creation is something that interests you, I know sooner or later <laughs> it will come. The day that I, think I the know I'm in love. That I do to get into the writing headspace. Will it feel warm and dry? Like a kiss in July? Will it chill down my bones? Will it cool like the snow? And I look at my window so What the universe has in store for me People passing by in the street Will be smiling at me Cause they already know What is a life been in love The sky starts to roll up its clouds so the sun can just stop hiding now The windows will open and sing Like birds that are spread <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, hello, my name is Becca. I'm a horror writer. I'm currently working on my debut novel and I love to talk about all things writing, bookish, lifestyle here on the channel. Um, I just finished filming a main channel video, which is why I look a little bit more put together than normal, but I just wrapped up my video for Tuesday because I'm really trying to push myself to do two videos a week this month just to see how it goes. I'm trying to give you guys one fun video and one like community building video with like the weekly vlogs and then also one like more informational craft style video just because I've been getting such great feedback on my other two videos that I've done regarding this kind of thing and it makes me feel really good when I feel like I can help you guys out. I feel like a lot of writers share the same kind of struggles so uh, it was fun to film. They're always a little bit more intimidating. First, because I use the back camera of my phone and I can't really see myself. <laughs> so I'm always like, are my eyes darting all over the place? Do I look insane right now? Does my hair look flat? Today, I have the whole apartment to myself. Edwin's out on a site visit, or like it's like an event for work actually. And um, it's just me. I had two big things on my to-do list today. Well, three big things. I had to get right respond to an email for an interview. And then um, I needed to film Tuesday's video. I wanted to bulk film, actually, like a couple different videos. But I only managed to write the script for Tuesday's video. So I did that. I needed to start the vlog for this week's vlog <laughs> because I haven't done that. As you might have noticed in my last video, I was like out of town this past weekend so I didn't really write anything and then Monday and yesterday I just wanted to spend time with Edwin so that's what I did. Did we binge all of the Rings of Power so far? Yes we did. Uh, second season. And so today we're gonna hop back into writing. I feel like my writing vlogs lately have been... Mm, I wasn't really actually super jazzed with my last one. And it's usually because I talk too much. I'm talking too much right now but a little bit of yapping isn't like the worst thing in the world, I guess. Or maybe it is for my watch time. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna write. I am so close to finishing this bad boy. I have it set my manuscript goal. I did put manuscript goals back into my Scrivener just because I am so close to the end and I actually need, I need the daily word counts to help me visualize how close I am to the end. So we are at 61-ish thousand words. Okay. My goal is 75 by September 15th. I really want to get the draft done before my friend's wedding this month, which is on the 20th. That is very attainable. It puts us at about like 600-ish words a day, which is so doable. And I'm happy to do more. Honestly, we're getting to like the really, really good part of the story where like all the shit's hitting the fan. And I didn't write this uh, portion of the book when I did my zero draft, because I'm like, I know what it's going to look like. I'm not gonna worry about it. And now that I'm writing it, I'm actually like, oh, do I? <laughs> so I'm actually dragging my feet a little bit because I am having to tackle some pretty tough themes and uh, I'm trying not to get too hung up. I'm trying to do them as naturally as they feel right now. I can always go back and edit. Yeah, 
that is that is where we're at so i'm on chapter 19 i think we have about i don't really know how many chapters left we have to go but we're almost to the end so what i want to do is get out of the house so i'm probably going to go work at a coffee shop across the way and get some words in probably gonna do like an hour and a half maybe two i will check in with you guys then should be a good time i love the vlogs and uh hopefully this motivates you to do some writing as well so i will see you when we go to go write It is much later. It is almost 6.30. I've been honestly working on editing this uh, video, this the video that I filmed this morning for like the last three-ish hours, maybe like two-ish hours. I had a lot of like, I don't, polish to my videos. I try to add a lot of polish to my videos. I always try to do like one new thing in my videos to like, slowly build up my knowledge of like I use Premiere Pro to edit my videos so I just love editing videos and I like taking my time with them yeah I have just been chugging along editing this video I'm really proud of it honestly and I managed to keep it short which I don't I mean I don't have any particular feeling I love a long video but sit down videos and like informational videos I feel like the shorter the better I am just about to wrap that up, export it, get it all taken care of. I meant to take a thumbnail at the coffee shop earlier and it just didn't happen. It was a lot busier than I thought. Hit my writing goal for today. That was awesome. I did finally manage to get a pumpkin spice iced coffee, which was so good. If content creation and like the behind the scenes of content creation is something that interests you, please let me know in the comments down below because I would love to start doing like how I make my videos, how I color grade, how I like add different like graphics and like I finally figured out how to use the green screen in Adobe uh, Premiere and it has changed my life. <laughs> I feel like it is such a handy tool to know and it is literally the easiest thing in the world. I feel like I just love sharing like my knowledge and with people and so like if you I would love to do like a content creation series on just like how I do everything I feel like my videos have improved so much in just the like nine months that I've been posting on YouTube I could geek out about that stuff <laughs> for like ever so I'm going to do a few more passes of this video to like just make sure that it's ready to go and then export it and yeah probably just spend the rest of the evening with my husband to be completely honest.
Hello guys, it is the next day. I am getting ready to put on just like a little bit of makeup because while I have a very chill day ahead of me, I do need to go to the pharmacy and I do need to go to the store because I ran out of face wash. So uh, I wanna do a little like get ready with me while answering a couple of questions that I've gotten. Um, so recently we hit 1.5K here on the channel. Thank you so much. And um, I decided to do like a little like ask me anything. So I asked over on my Instagram and I asked um, on my community tab on YouTube if there were any questions you guys wanted to ask me. I did get a couple, so I thought it would be fun to like get ready and answer the questions. I don't have my glasses on and I'm so blind. I have the questions kind of pulled up in front of me here. Let's answer some questions while we get ready. Admittedly, I'm not very good at multitasking. I don't know how those like get ready with me influencers do this because it takes all of my brain power to just put on primer. So the first question comes from my bestie Cody. He says, what is the one or many things you do to get into the writing headspace or something you can't write without? Example, specific scent, beverage, playlist, watching a YouTube. So proud of you. Great question. I actually have um, a video going up literally this Tuesday kind of answering like how I structure my writing routine and how I kind of get into the writing headspace. I think the biggest thing that I do to get into the writing headspace is just like clear my space of distractions. So like I need noise canceling headphones. I am a very like sensory overload person and so anything that I can use to kind of block out the world while I'm trying to focus on something is like really really helpful. I love having a candle as well like I associate specific scents to specific moments in my life. For example <laughs> I've been writing this entire book to what is it? Sun Drenched Linen by Bath and Body Works because it's my favorite candle from them at the moment and now anytime I smell it I'm like reminded of this book and working on this book and it's I don't know, it makes me happy so I think um and water I, I think I considered fun drinks but honestly more than anything I need water I drink so much water I have a 40 ounce Awala that I am just constantly refilling I drink like two or three of these a day. Oh, I got makeup on it. Okay, well, also do y'all like my stickers? So the next question that I got was from Nom de Bloom, I'm gonna assume that's how you say it. And they ask, when you are first coming up with an idea for a story, do you start with the basic overarching premise or do you begin with a specific character concept and build a story around them? Great question. I think it emphasizes that like stories can literally come from anywhere. There's a couple different ways and honestly it depends on the story. So for example the story I'm working on right now it really stemmed from The Haunting of Hill House and The Bent Neck Lady were like a really big inspiration for the story that I'm currently writing. And then as I thought about kind of like my own Bent Neck character I thought about the themes that I would want to tackle in a story like that and so slowly the story kind of started taking shape and it really just kind of happened on its own. I think that's when you know you have a good story or something that's like worth pursuing is like the stories will typically take shape on their own, obviously with a little help from you and a little refining, but there's uh, the gothic rom- I was about to say gothic rom-com. The gothic romance that I have not forgotten about and still very much so want to pick back up stemmed more so from me wanting to do like a Twilight retelling that made sense, that had a little bit more drama, that had a little bit more intrigue. Just obviously like I wanted to incorporate the things that like I was really interested in. And there's there's other stories that are floating around in my head that have come from different places, again from like themes that I would want to tackle or like specific horror tropes that I'm really interested in. It's really, it just depends on the story. Raquel Reads and Writes asks, do you have a character in your writing that that you favor more than others? If so, how do you prevent yourself from not putting them in peril? This one's pretty easy because I love putting my characters in peril. I love putting them in really messed up situations because that's where I feel like the most interesting stories come from. That is the story after all, right? It's like, how are they gonna, how are they gonna navigate through this like impossible situation? 
as of right now, I don't think there's any characters that I specifically favor. It's also kind of tough because this character, this, this specific story is like quite centered on these two characters. There's obviously secondary characters, but it really is a snapshot of this relationship and they're isolated they're they're kind of by themselves and there isn't a ton of wiggle room for like this big cast of characters right i actually really do love my antagonist i think he started off quite flat and as i've gone through the story and as i've gone through this sort of second draft i've really found like his voice and his story and i found a way to make him much more dynamic and I think number one as a writer that's really rewarding and then I don't know if there's a number two to that it's just really rewarding as a writer to be able to like take a character and like really build upon them and have them be really dynamic and engaging and like I almost I really like when like you find yourself empathizing with the villain I feel like that's what makes a good villain is when there there's logic to the things that they're doing and their motivations and you can kind of like empathize with them I feel like that's those are the best kinds of villains those are the villains that I love so I also got a few questions over on my Instagram and Peyton is writing asked any advice on hitting that 1.5k on YouTube I think the biggest tip and the, the thing that has paid off the most for me is definitely being consistent. I have tried to upload one video a week, every week since January. I think there's only like one or two times that I haven't done that. And I also try to diversify the type of content that I post. So obviously I post a lot of writing vlogs. I love writing vlogs. I, I think they're so fun. I also post a lot of like lifestyle and like daily vlog kind of stuff because that's what I like to watch. I also try to make sure that part of my content is like educational and beneficial to a certain extent. So like Nick is writing does such a great job of creating some of the best deep dive videos and like craft videos and i think they are it i mean it it shows in her growth that people really really love and resonate that with that kind of content from her i feel like to a certain extent she's kind of found her niche she's found this thing that she really loves talking about while she's also working on her own project it's this very like almost well-rounded picture and i try to do that as well in a different way when i started filming more of my sit down videos and i started to do a little bit more what i call like educational content or content that other re like writers would be searching out if they're on their writing journey i was really nervous because i'm like man i'm i'm doing this for like the first time yes i have a writing background yes i went to school and got my english degree but at the same time it's like i haven't published a book i don't know a lot about writing a book I'm going through it for the first time and I really felt like my like who would want to take my advice right <laughs> who's gonna listen to me and oddly enough that is the reason a lot of people like my sit down videos and like my I don't want to someone referred to them like a master class and I think that's like such a high compliment but truly I think being able to be vulnerable with people and share like what's working for me even though i'm not a professional and i haven't published a book i'm sharing this first time experience writing the book and it's resonating with a lot of people so i think from like a content perspective that is really important to have a mix of material that's going to build your audience and have them care about what it is that you're saying because you're providing some sort of value but then also doing the vlogs and being like oh okay like not only do i think that she has really good advice i actually really like her as a person so there's like a like a two level system of creating i think loyalty and association with your audience and, and starting to build that trust with your audience i think if i had to like break it down essentially is like figure out like the content that you want to make figure out where you can provide value for an audience member why would they care about you outside of your writing vlogs they don't know you they don't care about you so like how are you going to get them to care 
And then in terms of like actually creating content, my biggest piece of advice, and I think Mr. Beast said this, which I don't follow Mr. Beast, but obviously he's got a huge platform. Try to learn one new thing every single time you post a video. So if you look back through my videos, they all have very different vibes different branding, different video editing styles, different music. And one of the other biggest pieces of advice that I heard when it comes to content creation is when you're first starting your channel, you have a level of flexibility that you might not ever get again. You can, you can explore with different niches. You're still building an audience. They don't really know what to expect from you. So like you have the flexibility to play around and that's what I did. I played around with a lot of different branding, editing styles, all this stuff. I taught myself how to color grade and I invested from CapCut to Premiere Pro. And so like now there's just, I've learned how to use like adjustment layers, which makes editing in CapCut and color grading, or not CapCut, editing in Premiere Pro so much more streamlined and I learned how to create subtitles in Premiere Pro. I learned how to do transitions. I learned how to use the green screen. I learned so much stuff. And if you look at my like most recent video to like my first video or like my second video, there's a just stark jump and I think quality, constantly learning and pouring back into the channel and being really intentional with the stuff that you put on is like really important. Once you do those things and you kind of learn how you want to pour back into your channel, you'll start to see the growth and the engagement. Mick is writing asked, yay, congrats. What's your favorite line from your work in progress so far? I think my opening line is probably my favorite and it needs some tweaking. It's from my main character, Veronica, and she says, I have always been a ghost. I'm really proud of that line. I feel like it foreshadows so much about what happens in the book. Obviously she's not a ghost, she's very much real. I think it sets the tone for a lot of, of what happens and a lot of her journey. I don't know, I love a good opening line and I feel really proud about that one. That's my favorite line. I am going to stop yapping because I've been talking for like 20 minutes doing my makeup. I am going to, I think, get some stuff ready for like a writing session and then go to the store and pick up everything I need and come back for lunch. tired it's been like four or oh, five and a half hours since I last checked in I uh went and ran my errands I did a writing session I wrote with Cody I meant to write a little bit more but then I got sidetracked with like job hunting things and so we got some of the words in that we needed to get in today where are we at 423 of 679 so I'll probably do like another quick writing session after Edwin gets home and we have dinner and everything. Felt good to get some writing in and I'm at a part in the story. I'm in the dark night of the soul. This chapter is like very heavy. We are at 62,000 words out of the 70,000 for the draft that I have kind of calculated. I was telling Cody earlier that I was so nervous that I wasn't going to be able to like make this like a full story with some substance. Uh, my draft my, my zero draft is 50k and we are almost gonna hit 70k so the fact that like I managed to put in another 20,000 words and there's still so much more that needs to come out and go in at the same time it's just really cool like it's like you can see the progress happening so I'm going to pick up the apartment have some dinner and then probably do one more quick writing session tonight to at least hit 
the word count because I can definitely knock out like another 250 words easy. That's the update. Also, I did my nails. I got like the fancy salon quality gel um, because I'm going to a wedding in like two weeks. They did send the wrong color. I ordered a pink and somehow I got white. However, they look really good. Uh, I'm hoping this is gonna last a lot longer than the Beatles gel that I was using before, which is apparently giving everybody allergies. So that's my update. <laughs>few days since I actually like talked to the camera mainly because I hit a little bit of like a paralysis I don't know how else to explain it other than the fact that like I just felt like I couldn't do anything um, and I'm not sure if it was my anxiety or what but like <laughs> I didn't write for two days <laughs> um, it's Saturday and it is gorgeous outside. It's like the lowest it's been since I think spring. It's like the highest 65, 66. I thought I would take you guys with me on another outside writing excursion because I really like that and it's even chillier than the last time that I went out. So um, I sat outside by uh, the fire pit last night and was like shocked at how cold it had gotten. So I need to finish packing my bag. We're gonna go make a return. I'm gonna go get some breakfast because I haven't eaten yet. And then we're gonna go right out in the park. I'm thinking the benches were a little uncomfortable. So I have a picnic blanket and I think I'm gonna like pull a Roy Gilmore and pick my tree and sit and write for a little bit, so. Also, this is totally random, last thought. But like I, as you saw, managed to thrift a copy of New Moon. So uh, this version actually matches the other four that I already have. But I had bought the new version of New Moon because I'm like, man, it's taking forever to find at the thrift and I want to read it for October. And so I just caved and bought it. But now that I thrifted it the other day, I can like return the new copy. But look at the difference in size. Like, it's the same book. And it's just so crazy how like different margins because i know the original the text is a little bit bigger the margins are a little bit bigger but in like the new one it looks a little different but i'm just like that's crazy anyway do you like my mic setup um hopefully this thing works and it doesn't sound sound too weird but i've been sitting out here for about an hour and i got about a couple hundred words in honestly i've been so di the weather has been so distracting because i'm just kind of like i started reading and i started listening to music and i just kind of felt myself relax for the first time in i don't know how long so 
I'm going to give myself a little bit of grace right now. I did move from the floor to an actual picnic bench. Hopefully I can actually like sit and focus on my writing. Again, I'm like in a really intense scene and I'm kind of like dragging my feet with it, but I'm hoping that I can get through this chapter today. Finally, it's already at like 2000 words. I don't want it to be more than three. I don't foresee it being more than three, possibly, but it is kind of like the big reveal moment. We gotta go through some dark stuff to get there. I just wanted to give like a writing update and also end the vlog off here because I feel like it's getting a little long. As always, I just wanna give you guys like a huge thank you and shout out for just watching my videos. I say this at the end of like every video, but it really does mean a lot to me anytime someone like comments or subscribes it i don't i'm so thankful especially because a lot of my content is really just me sharing my writing journey and i hope that this motivates you or inspires you to either start sharing your writing journey or go on your writing journey it's been a very like wonderful experience in my book um and i just I just started sharing it this year so thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and maybe if you're not subscribed and would love to see more stuff from me maybe consider subscribing um, I post new videos every Saturday thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one bye